All right, so back here for another episode of our fantasy uh, tips for the Fantasy Premier League. And yeah, let's have a look at what the Transfer Algo has to say this week. The Transfer Algo was created by Mikkel Tukvam, and it is a fantastic tool to help guide your fantasy decisions because it puts out a rating of each player and how much value they are to have in your team based on their underlying stats based on the teams that they are facing coming up in the next round. And yeah, I use this tool myself to improve my fantasy decisions. And really it's it's great when you're sort of trying to decide between two players, like which player should I be putting into my team? Yeah. And of course it also factors in the price of the players, which is a pretty big component of all of this. Oh, all wow. right. I've just seen the new midfield table. Madison has gone up to second place. Madison has gone up, yeah, and Salah is still very, very clear on top. He's my captain uh, for this week, and he'll be my captain next week. Liverpool have a very easy run of games. I have been considering putting Mane into my team and just doubling up on Liverpool. For now, I'm stuck to keeping Gomez in defense because I also think we're going to keep a lot of clean sheets, and he's a lot cheaper. And uh, but yeah, I'm, I am considering switching things up a bit because right now I have the same team as all of my competitors and that's not ideal if you want to uh, to move ahead. But I just objectively think Me it's the Me being your team. biggest competitor, mate? No, I'm, I'm thinking about the guys in my football team. Oh, okay. Yeah. Are you winning that league too? No, no, I'm like fourth there. I have oh. been doing so badly lately that uh, they've all gone past me. Um, but yeah, the big news coming up for this game week is that there's no game for Arsenal, Man City... Uh, Sheffield United and Aston Villa, I'm pretty sure. So those four oh. teams. So um, in terms of transfers this week, you're probably going to – some people are going to have to look at uh, subbing out some of those players because I've got – I think I've got – who have I got? I've got Henderson, he's Sheffield United. I've got O'Connell, he's Sheffield United, and I've got De Bruyne in there. So um, probably I've got two transfers this week, which is good. So probably get rid of two of them maybe, maybe just one because I know then, you know, the next game – they're gonna be back, and then you've got the other, uh, the other game week, which is just heavily affected. Is our uh, game week thirty one? So I'm probably gonna have to start preparing for that because I haven't got my free hit anymore. Yeah, I think I'll use the free hit in the game week thirty one, and then maybe I'll sub out Lundstrom this week because I, I was planning on doing that anyway, since he's not um, first choice anymore after he brought in Norwegian Sandberger. Yeah. But I'm assuming the reason these Leicester players have gone up is because they've got favourable fixtures coming up. Yeah. That would be my guess. So um, They do. They have a really good schedule. Yeah. So I would be looking at maybe bringing in a Harvey Barnes or a Madison. I like definitely. Barnes. Uh, wouldn't uh, Bruno Fernandes, probably not the time to bring him in, I would say, just because uh, of their schedule coming up. So He's too expensive. Yeah. Not so. In terms of midfielders, yeah, I think if, if there's any tips out there, it would be to put a Leicester player in there, bring bring a Leicester player in. Yeah, I think that's smart. And, I mean, obviously you had Richarlison and, and Calvert Lewin, so Everton players have been, been great value. Now they have a very, very tough schedule of games yeah. coming up. So this is going to be a good test because good players tend to score even when they are playing the big teams. So it might still not be bad to have them in there. It's just that they are less likely to score since they are playing better teams. So and also in general, one. there's not really any, there's only two, I would say, two big teams <laughs> in yeah. the in the Premier League where you're like, oh God, I probably won't get points there. Whereas if yeah, you're playing, that's a good point. if you're playing like Man United, Chelsea, Arsenal, you know, I still think there's points available there because they're not doing that well. But um, yeah, we'll look at the um, the forwards, I guess now. How are they going? All right. So Jamie Vardy is wow. still on top. He hasn't scored since December. I still have him in my team and I back him to turn things around. Let's to have like five mm. easy, easy games coming up. Jamie Vardy is going to score in one of them. Uh, but I have played around with the thought of subbing him out. I just don't think now is the time to do it. If I should have done it, I should have done it multiple rounds ago when they had a tougher schedule and now that the games are easing up, I think that's a typical mistake that people make is to sub people out based on past performances and not looking at the games yeah. coming up ahead. And uh, the, I, one, the one thing that worried me about Vardy and Leicester, though, is that it seemed like when Vardy came, you know, Vardy got that injury where he had a kid or something. Yeah. And it seemed like in that period of time they figured out a way to play without him. And even when he was back in the team, uh, 
the other guys were scoring way more, like mm. uh, Perez, um, Madison, Barnes, all them were figuring out a way to score without him. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't think he's as good as he used to be. Like it kind of seemed like at the start of the season they were relying on him to score all the time, yeah. whereas now they've kind of figured out a way around that. So, um, yeah, I mean there were games where they scored four goals and he didn't score any of them. Mm. Leicester about a month ago. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I think it's 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 obviously a, logically it's a good move, isn't it? Because they've got these easy run of games. Yeah. But is it worth the price? Nine point seven. It's a big total. It's a big price. I mean, I have been thinking about bringing in a guy like a Balmain or like doubling up a Mane. Mane was just slightly too expensive for me. But maybe bringing in. Wow. Um, he's expensive too, isn't he? Oh, yes, but, uh, but they've got four fixtures coming up that are very, very, yeah, very. And I, I need to mix something up, so maybe I should have. I brought him in as in for Martinelli uh, this week because Martinelli looks like he's going to be playing in the Europa League, and mm-hmm. uh, it was about to have him in. But I would consider like Eddie bring, and Kedia. but bringing him, yeah, <laughs> four point three. But uh, you just don't know if he's going to keep playing though. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that that could be an option, but in the end, like, it depends on what you're doing with that money. It's just, I had money in the bank for like the last round Yeah. when Martinelli was playing. But in the end, if I had, um, if, if there's not enough of an upgrade, like if I can have Jimenez or whoever on the pitch and then, and not have enough money to upgrade to and about Miang or, or money or whatever, then there's no real yeah, benefit yeah. of doing it. And also, once again, Arsenal aren't playing this weekend, so yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, um, but yeah, I am also considering like if I were to do it, I would put in Calvert Lewin, take off him and us probably, and then bring in a Bamiang or a Mane or something like that. I think that yeah. could be a good move. Yeah, cool. Do we want to do we want to have a look at the defenders quickly, or there's probably not much has changed in terms of Liverpool dominating? So it's Alexander Arnold, Robertson, Van Dijk, Aurier. Mm-hmm. Wow. And then uh, Pereira is still give value. Doherty, I guess, uh, bounced up a bit. Sam Kerr still in there. I still have him on my team. And then, um, yeah, I mean, most of the defenders are pretty expensive. O'Connell's best sort of good value here with Bully. And I guess you've done well to have him in your team, even though it's not ideal this game week. But one needs to think a bit further ahead than just uh, this game week. Yeah. So um, I guess that's it. I'm really um, surprised to see Aurier up the top there or near the top because, um, I don't know, maybe Tottenham have got some favourable fixtures around the corner or something. Yeah, but yeah. even so, like, their defence has been terrible yeah. um, and, they're, you know, they're not as good as they used to be. So yeah. I would say Pereira is maybe a good shout to bring in from Leicester. That yeah. would be my move, I think. Yeah. I used to have him for a long, long time. but yeah. And maybe a Doherty from Wolves too. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So that's our uh, fantasy advice for this week. So hope you enjoyed it. If you like this video, make sure that you give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel, TradeMate Sports. And then if you also want to get access to these uh, predictions yourself, you can go follow Mikhail Tukwam on uh, Patreon. It's only like a dollar fifty a month, and I think it's money well spent for getting good advice on how to improve my fancy team.